The Flyers win it in Colorado, their fourth straight win, and they are two for two on this road trip. Welcome to Post Game Live, presented by Curado Insurance. Ashlyn Scott now back here in Philadelphia. The West Coast has been pretty kind to the Flyers so far this season. And overall, when you look at today's game, a lot of impressive things. But offensively, so many goal scorers, and they even had more chances that didn't turn into goals, Scott. The, the usual suspects for me are doing it again for the Flyers. They're playing harder. They're up and up and down through the line, like, lineup. Excuse me. Uh, they're just playing dominant hockey when they want that puck, when they're holding onto the puck. Uh, it's hard to get the puck off the Flyers and uh, getting chances, second, third chances, uh, breakaway goals, the penalty shot goals. They're scoring in so many different ways this year. So it's, it's exciting to be a Flyers fan. It uh, wasn't what people thought it would be to, at the beginning of the year, but it's been it's been real enjoy, enjoyable yeah. to watch. So you come into the night talking about McKinnon and McCarr, and you come out talking about Sanheim and Konechny. That's the kind of, <laughs> I mean, that's the kind of night. I mean, there was so much to like in this game from from the goaltender on out uh, to responses when it looked like the ice might be tilted the other way. Mm -hmm. So to me, this might have been the most impressive win for me because of the way they came back each time it looked like Colorado was going to come at them again. Yeah, they definitely handled the swings of momentum, and that leads us to our PA Lottery winning moment. And it starts with Travis Sanheim getting on the board, or I'm sorry, Travis Konechny getting on the board off a penalty shot, Scott. Right, here's, here's the opportunity. He, he was no. just a beetle here going, and McKinnon almost catches him, throws the stick at him, <laughs> takes him down. But he got two penalty shots <laughs> for, for that. But then he comes in, just a beautiful move here. And he go, likes to go low glove, and he gets the top of the pad, and it gets by him, and that's the moment that this game changes. Yeah, goalie's pad, it's got that little, uh, you see by the toe there, kind of, I guess, bends inwards, and it kind of hits it right in that little crease and just pops up, and I, I don't think I've ever seen a goal like that, just kind of pop over and roll in like that, and then Sanheim getting his boots going here, taking the puck to the paint. And Farabee well, puts it in there. That's a powerful case. move there. And then, and then, as you mentioned, Farabee comes in. So it's a, it's a, his confidence right now, we, this is the, a couple of moments we saw it tonight. But just to come in and make that move like that, to come in with that sort of confidence. And then you're going to see, I thought, even Brink, I thought, had a terrific game also there right in front of the net. Yes. Yeah, his, old, his old barn, college yes. barn. Yep, multiple guys with multiple points tonight. Let's now go back out to Colorado and hear from J.J. and Bush. It is the crossover. And, guys, so many impressive things for tonight. A lot of goal scorers. You look down the list, multiple options. Then you even had some more chances with Cam Atkinson and Nick Delorier. Who was most impressive offensively for you tonight? Offensively, um, I, I got to go with Connecty. I mean, he's just a dynamic player right now on a roll. And uh, what I loved about the penalty shot, it was a great defensive play by him to start it and then he got the penalty shot and scored. His energy, as Bush talked about during the broadcast, is tremendous. But the thing is, Ash, I say it's easily Travis Konecki, but there were so many other players that played well in this game. Even a guy who didn't get a ton in terms of the, the score sheet, Sean Couturier had one assist, but he was, I thought, as close to the old Sean Couturier as we've seen this year in this game. Yeah, I mean, uh, it was primarily three centers tonight, right? So, so Coots had to take a lot of draws, over 22 minutes played, in altitude I, I thought he was big tonight I mean he was all over it I thought he played great with the fourth line with DeLore yeah. and Hathaway when he took shifts with them uh, but yeah for me it's Konechny uh, he just brings it every night I mean it, what else can you say he doesn't tire he's a dog on a bone and he's got the finish to go along with the work so uh, an impressive win here tonight in Colorado, uh, as as Al mentioned, you know, you go in talking about McKinnon and McCarr, and we're now it's about uh, Konechny and Sanheim. That's a that's a great line because the Flyers certainly uh, matched up here tonight. And you know that Sanheim setup on that one goal, I just noticed that now watching that replay, they did that against probably the best defensive pair in the league. Uh, Taves and McCarr both kind of victimized on that play and that's the kind of night it was for the Flyers. Yeah, that's definitely an underrated move, a power move, bringing the puck. It's a hard area to go to uh, when you're doing that, for a defenseman even to do that. But this is the first time the Flyers went 7-D, 11 forwards. Do you think that was a calculated roster move with the thin air kind of... Uh, uh, Managing Sanheim's minutes, uh, you know, long shifts, uh, you're going to get tired just to kind of spread the, the wealth on the back end there? I do, and I, I think it was unexpected probably that Lixell played in Arizona. Had Paling not gotten sick, I think we would have seen Ryan Paling in there. And I just think that maybe Torts had a little bit more uh, comfortability uh, with 7-7 seven, seven defense. And tonight, I, I think, you know, Stahl played under 10 minutes. 
Zamula played, I think, just over 12. Sanheim was over 22 minutes tonight. So he had his legs going. Uh, I don't know how much rest he got, but he was going tonight. And I think Torres recognized it. Make sure you get him out there, or Brad Shaw, I should say. Make sure you get him out there. Know that he's he's playing well. And he responded he, he responded perfectly here tonight. I thought the defense played uh, as good as they can play against a high-powered offense that plays with speed. Not an easy opponent. Not an easy opponent. And, you know, you talked with, with Travis in between the second and third. I just get the feeling he doesn't love the seven <laughs> defense with his answers. We'll see how long they go with it because it's tough. You don't know who you're going to be with. And there were a lot of different looks in terms of pairs. So I, I'm not sure some of the defensemen love it. Forwards also talk about it being weird, although I thought it worked out really well. Mm -hmm. As you mentioned, Couturier taking some shifts with, with uh, Hathaway and Deloria, and that, that actually worked out to be a good line. So you never know. Maybe we'll see it again in Nashville. Paling is getting better. Talk that he'll be rejoining the club, so that could change things too. So guys, you're traveling with the team. You've seen uh, Boosh throughout the league. Have they opened the eyes to everybody in the league here in Philadelphia? We're like, wow, look what's happened with the Flyers. Have they not? Are they? Can they still sneak up on anybody, or is, is the story out on this team? Uh, I don't. I don't know how you can sneak up on anybody anymore at this point. You mentioned we're a third of the way into the season. Uh, you start to see trends. You start to see teams that are playing well and what they're about. If, if you're not paying attention to the way the Flyers play, shame on you. I mean, th this is a team that works. This is a team that's been primarily healthy, which has helped them as well. Um, they defend hard. They, they try to limit, you know, east-west plays as best as possible. And they're getting finish uh, in, 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 in transition plays, which is helping them as well. For a team that has not had success in the power play for them to be able to score the way they're scoring be opportunistic this is a team that you got to take notice of because uh they work and, and if you're not ready to play they will embarrass you danny briere alluded to this in our pregame discussion with him but a really good barometer of a team isn't necessarily what that team's coach is saying or the players or the media or anything it's what the other team's players and coaches say and almost to a fault this year Bush after a game against the Flyers the other team's coach is full of praise for the Flyers uh, that is a sign that this team is for real and I have a feeling that Jared Bednar is going to be talking about how good this team is as well after this game here tonight absolutely a very good sign Jim Jackson Brian Boucher thanks so much we will talk to you Tuesday in Nashville Tennessee and Flyers with a big win tonight that is four straight wins for the Flyers and two for two so far on this road trip we have much more to come here on post game live presented by Curado Insurance stay with us here on NBC Sports Philadelphia Flyers Post Game Live is presented by Cure Auto Insurance. See how much you can save at cure.com.